Hi, good evening. Uh, this is Arindam Lahiri. Um, I represent an organization called Kalakendra Training and Career Development Institute. And we work on teacher training, uh, including preparation for CTED. So today's session, uh, we will be starting off with a series on the CTET prep and we are focusing on paper one uh, today uh, with a special emphasis on the mathematics portion which happens to be one of the most challenging parts for many of you. And uh, in terms of our entire preparation, uh, mathematics definitely is an important part of the whole preparation as is most of the other sections. You know very well that there are uh, five sections. So let's take a, uh, I'll definitely uh, take in your questions as we go along. Um, I'll just give a brief overview right away and uh, then we, we can take questions uh, as you may want to uh, ask questions as and when uh, you may want to. In terms of the paper one overview, you know very well that there are five sections. It's the first section is on child development and pedagogy, CDP, mathematics, EVS, environmental science, and language one and language two. Uh, you can opt for uh, any one language as language one and you can take another one as language two, English, Hindi, or whatever different language you may want to. You can take Sanskrit as well as one of the languages and accordingly you will have to attempt uh, those uh, languages. The critical thing to note is that there is an equal emphasis on all of this, though in terms of the preparation the emphasis might be a little different, especially I think for most of you in terms of language one and language two, the preparation might be comparatively easier. If I take a look at the content, uh, if I take a look at the questions for uh, mathematics, they are broadly divided into two areas. Uh, content questions. There are 15 questions which are relevant here. This includes very basic and elementary mathematics, number and operations, maths, uh, essentially multiplication, addition, division, subtraction, measurement, weight and volume, time and money, different patterns, data handling and geometry, very basic geometry including knowledge of shapes and solids. <coughs> if we look at the pedagogical issues, we have what we call as uh, basic teaching of maths, nature of maths, then we have um, evaluation techniques, remedial mathematics, community mathematics and so on. So if you look at this, this part, the, the pedagogical side of it, uh, you will notice that 
this is not something um, you know which you've taken in a in a multiple choice question format but if you look at some of the examples uh, some of the you will realize that many of them could be categorized as commonsensical as well so uh, that definitely gives us a leeway in terms of scoring at least some marks as far as the mathematics section is concerned and please remember that there is only an overall cutoff or CTET there are no sectional cutoffs so though it is not important that you need to score 60 percent in mathematics section but my feel is that those of you who have discontinued mathematics after class 10 you will still be able to get at least 40 45 percent in this section because 50 percent of the questions are from the pedagogical issues many of which you should be able to answer straight away Now, you are completely aware that as far as the multiple choice questions are concerned, there is a very peculiar way of addressing these MCQs. And in this particular format of multiple choice that CTET serves, all choices except one are wrong. So you can eliminate wrong choices straight away so that your number of possible choices can come down. You can pair choices, you can have you know directional choice which direction the number should be and so on. So, it is very uh, interesting uh, to look at uh, the kind of questions that come in CTT paper 1 mathematics section. This is a question from one of the actual papers. Many of you may have seen it already. It's a time of the day question, uh, addition, subtraction of time. And the first option, when you, when, or the first thing that you feel when you look at this question is that it's about 3 p.m. and you have to calculate about five hours before this. So, it's got to be an AM and the correct answer choice cannot be a PM. Hence, my answer option C is definitely out. Now that leaves me with the three other options. Five hours before this, if I forget four hours for 59 minutes, I will have five hours. And if I subtract five hours from this, you know very well that we are talking about close to 10 o'clock, little less than 10 o'clock. So if it had been exactly five hours, it would have been 9.58. However, it is four hour 59 minutes, one minute less than five hours, therefore it got, it's got to be 9.59. So that's how you essentially can address such simple content question even if you yourself are not too comfortable having solved these kind of questions for a while right? because then once you've crossed your school uh, education you may not have necessarily done these 
kind of calculation. You would have done the round figure calculation, but not exact minutes, etc. So, let's look at <coughs> this I have already spoken to you about. Now let us look at another question. We are talking about the remainder issue here. Divisibility. First, you need to figure out what is that remainder you get when you divide 176 division, simple division, and find it out. And you will be able to find out that the result is. Two. Maximum remainder obviously is two because divisor is three. And then, then there is only one correct answer. See if you start looking at the options, we start with the highest divisor and we see that it is five. If I just go back for a minute to the question. So you can see from here that I'm talking about this option. And in this option the remainder here is two, uh, sorry three. One option is anyway straight away out because you know any even number is divisible by two. If you divide 175 by 3, obviously you cannot get the same remainder as dividing 176 by 3. So this is also out. These are also out. So you are left with this one and it's an automatic elimination system. Now obviously when I have explained to you it has taken a lot of time and you will say that in CTET we get about 40 seconds to answer a question. How am I going to do this in 40 seconds? The catch here is that you need to do a little more, little bit of a practice while thinking in this manner, in an MCQ manner. And looking at the question itself, you would immediately then start looking at the question and eliminating such options. And therefore, you will be able to do it in less than a minute. Let us look at some more fundamentals of remainders. The divisibility rule itself gives us the remainder. Remember we were talking about 176 divided by 3. And all of you know that if you have to divide a number by 3, you need to add digits and whatever that uh, addition is, if it is divisible by 3, then it is divisible by 3. Now 1 plus 7 plus 6 adds up to 14, 1 plus 4 adds up to 5, therefore the remainder will be 5 divided by 3 which is in this case the remainder is 2. So you've simplified the problem further. And then there are other divisibility rules. I'm sure you know the easier ones. Uh, uh, divisibility rule by 4. The last two digits must be 0 or both of them must be divisible by 4. You could also look at divisibility by 
uh, 5 which is last digit is 0 and uh, 5. Similarly 9, the sum of the digits must be divisible by 9 and so on. You open up a basic book and you will get a lot of divisibility rules straight away. Here is also another support of the web for those of you who access web. You can use it, uh, you know, you can use mathforum.org, a very, uh, very exciting resource as far as divisibility rules is concerned. Uh, any, for that matter, actually any concept in, basic concept in maths is concerned. Um, 11, you keep subtracting the last digit from the balance number till you get a zero. Um, if you get a zero, then you know that it is uh, divisible by 11. Similarly, 31, you keep subtracting thrice the last digit from the balance number. For 41, you keep subtracting four times the last digit from the balance number to get a zero, and so on. Interesting, uh, divisible up to 50 is something which could be intriguing. Some of you will have to, uh, you know, necessarily uh, look at what is it that uh, you can do to enhance your interest in some of these concepts which are very basic. Let us look at another question. Summation of different units of measurement. The answer must be more than 5 kilometer because that's the highest unit between kilometer, meter and centimeter. And if it is more than 5 kilometer, then it must be more than 5,000 meter because 1 kilometer is 1,000 meter. And hence, straight away you could look at the answer option C where it gives you a number which is greater than 5 kilometer or 5000 meter. The others are, are all smaller numbers. So this way uh, your approach could be without trying to split your hairs if you could use some of the basic logic in terms of eliminating choices of multiple choice uh, answer options, then you are better placed and you can even do it faster. So see, when you start initially, it will obviously take you a lot of time. But as you go along, as you practice more, then, you know, it will become a habit for you. And therefore, it will not take as much time as you would have actually taken in the initial period. But if you, in the initial period itself, if you give it up because you think that it is taking too much of a time, then you will obviously, you know, um, lose it uh, because eventually it's going to take time if you want to convert each into one single uh, unit and then add, you know, just the way the kids would do, then you will, you would necessarily need more time. The reason why it is converted into MCQ is it's also actually trying to evaluate your logical reasoning capabilities as well, in addition to the mathematical skills or the science skills or the language skills. Let's do a quick poll. Uh, if some of you can uh, quickly click your answer, many of you would have uh, 
seen this? Before? You need to do this quickly. We've got, remember, 40 seconds. Oh, okay. I think I pulled up the wrong one. This... Uh, uh, sorry. You've got a Mm, fresh one. Uh, it's thirty seconds. I'm waiting for some more people to vote. But those of you who have really uh, voted this fast, fantastic. So it's 40 seconds now. Let me just close this. And uh, let me also share the poll results. Great. No mistakes. Very good. Okay, so let's move on. This question uh, is a very interesting question and, uh, you know, using a very standard property of number system of the difference of numbers a number and um, uh, an, another number obtained by reversing its digits. If you were to do it for two digits what is the difference the difference is always 9 if you take you know 21 12 31 30 uh, th sorry 31 13 they're, they're all divisible by 9 okay and the same holds true even if we go to the larger digits okay and you can use something which we have learned before which is the divisibility rule for 9 and you know what it is it's basically a number which is divisible by uh, if you add all the digits and if that number is divisible by 9 then you get uh, then the whole number is divisible by 9 so if you look at, if you glance at these numbers very quickly you will realize that it's option D which is divisible by nine. So you can take one option at a time, add them up quickly. Let me do it for you. So we have here 19, we have here 18 plus 1, again 19, 
then we have 10 plus 10 20 and then finally we have 1 which is 18 so it's not important about what answer I'm getting the objective here is that how can I take a process take up a process we where green we have if we have a similar question then we can have a method which we can do quite fast and at the same time be accurate because it's important to remember that when we are talking about CTET there are two important elements to the whole strategy one is the speed with which you have to attempt because you have to do questions in 40 seconds and you have to be accurate because you have to get 60 percent marks and you know if you have a higher accuracy then of course your speed is likely to come down which is okay because if you let's say in a, a, you have a 90 minute test and if you take up 50 seconds in that 90 minute test okay uh, then you will be able to do much less attempt much less question and therefore you have to be more accurate so if you are taking more time you got to be more accurate if you're doing it faster you can sacrifice a little bit of accuracy but I'll tell you what in terms of the preparation process you got to first focus on accuracy many of you would be overawed by this fact that I have to do a question in 40 seconds and will focus on speed alone and never bothering too much about the accuracy but please remember if you have done you know complete attempted all the 150 questions but if your accuracy is lower than 60 percent you are anyway not going to get any marks and the fact remains that as long as you don't get 60 percent of the overall marks you're not going to be qualified so there's no use of having a very high speed and not being accurate. Okay? So first practice accuracy. Subsequently when you are accurate and you've, you've done enough warm-ups, you will be able to increase your speed substantially. So let's move on. Interesting question again. This is the beauty of number systems. this pattern number patterns you know a lot of questions on number systems are based on various patterns unfortunately uh, you know in schools we don't do too much of this but if some of you are interested in basic concepts of Vedic mathematics or speed mathematic techniques as they say in the West uh, you realize that many of these are essentially decoding of the fact that numbers have certain patterns, number properties have certain patterns and using those patterns certain rules are being set up, have been set up. In this particular case this is about the product of numbers in the form 1, 1, multiplied by 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, multiplied by 1, 1, 1 so as many digits as you have you write in the middle 
and then on the right hand side you go down up to one all consecutive digits and on the left hand side again you go down to one write all the consecutive digits so the current question has five digits so you write five in the middle and you go down five four three two one and on the right hand side and then five four three two one on the left hand side and you've got an answer which you already have now this again if somebody does not realize why the question is given this pattern and straight away gets on to starting to multiply this five digit ones with five digit ones then obviously you've got a problem and that's not what was expected out of you here when this one was given so you need to utilize all the information that's given in the question reading the question correctly or rather reading the question incorrectly is one of the major reasons of people not doing well in these kind of examinations we'll move on you already talked about it oh. let's go to the next one Okay, let's uh, uh, pause for uh, a minute and I can go down to people um, for taking in their questions. I have one from um, Garima Jain and uh, uh, after this, Garima, I'll give you the speaking rights and you could ask your question. I guess uh, Garima, you did not pick that up, though you have uh, you raised the hand. Okay. Um, so anyway, let's continue. Let's continue uh, with this question. On predecessor and successor. Yes. This calls for sequence of number. I think the real problem with such kind of question is about the word predecessor and successor and not so much the math. Successor of predecessor of thousand is thousand. Predecessor of successor of thousand. So it's a it's interesting to note that it's also a little bit of verbal comprehension, you know, understanding of the language. And um, I'm sure aap log jo Hindi mein karte hain isko, to Hindi mein bhi ye confusing hoga, ye question jo hai. So when you're talking about predecessor and successor, predecessor of successor, predecessor of predecessor of 
thousand, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, uh, predecessor of predecessor, successor of predecessor, successor of predecessor, predecessor of successor. So essentially, you're talking about two operations. One either a predecessor or a successor first and then again a predecessor or a successor second. So you have to be very very careful uh, to be able to realize you know uh, as to what exactly are we talking about here and predecessor of successor of thousand is thousand is uh, you know what is uh, what, what is very important to see. Sorry, I had lost my control panel, so I'll just go back and uh, activate it. Yep. So I'm, I'm assuming that when you read such questions, you should not focus initially more on the number but you should focus on the sequence of the words predecessor and successor and then the number will automatically flow and that's very important. Let's do a quick poll again. You guys are very, very smart. So um, let me show this question as, uh, okay. So. It's, it's, it's not in a poll, but uh, maybe you can, um, you know, raise your hand if you know the answer and I can give you the speaking rights and you can share your way of doing this. That might be useful to uh, many of the others. Any takers for this? I'll be delighted if I can get some more methods of solution of these kind of questions. No takers? Okay. This is a question on the technique of forming. This is early part of forming equations. So here it is, the focus is not on calculation but focus is on sequence of mathematical operations that, that we need to do transfer from a word problem into a mathematical problem. So 239 toys, 70 more toys were brought in, then 125 were sold and the number of toys left. So whatever is brought in is addition and whatever is sold is subtraction is the base concept that we need to understand in this kind of a question. And when we are, you know, let me go to a related pedagogical question, okay. is that when we introduce the concepts of addition and subtraction, if you could do activities pedagogical activity, I mean classroom activities in terms of, um, you know, students Sujit has answered great, very good. Uh, thanks Sujit. Uh, so I had moved into the uh, uh, pedagogical uh, side of it, you know, in terms of as a teacher, uh, the focus that we need to do is not do it on the board, but probably use some prop 
in terms of allowing students to share them, add it to them. Uh, when they add, they kind of pass on and somebody becomes an addition, some, uh, some student is considered to be an addition. Subsequently, somebody becomes a subtraction, so people take away stuff from him. And then they are, they are able to understand the translation of such word problems when they are introduced at a later phase in terms of the addition and the subtraction processes. This one, I've got it on a poll. So let me activate the poll and you can respond to the poll. Looking for responses to this poll? Come on, 40 seconds, yeah? Some more people? One minute so far? Okay, I think it's, it's a lot of time, so uh, you're redone, a lot of time. Yeah, so uh, thanks, most of you have voted uh, in the poll, all of you have got the response correct, very good. Again, a word problem, here it involves multiplication as well as addition as well as subtraction. So it's technically a, a more difficult question and also you have to uh, realize though in the poll we put it as 2.5 rupees with the original question and the statement pencil cost two and a half rupees so that conversion into a number multiplication concept of a dozen very important gets introduced in this question and uh, similarly you know but again see the beauty of such questions is that this is something which is so easy to relate and even for the child so easy to relate so you could have paper money and play, in, do a game in the classroom to do this. So again, from a pedagogical perspective, activity perspective, there are so many different things that can be done. Now the reason why I'm sharing this is because CTET also involves questions around uh, the, the pedagogy in classroom and therefore a classroom or outside classroom, whatever, uh, you know. And therefore, um, it might be interesting to keep always thinking about such uh, opportunities of what are the possible ways of uh, teaching this concept in the classroom and uh, there could be some very innovative exciting thoughts about it. Interesting uh, question. 
and I can see some hand going up. Um, okay, Garima, I, 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 I would uh, definitely want you to kind of um, drop in a chat line that you really have consciously put up your hand, otherwise it just wastes a little bit of time for all of us. Anyway, let's continue till we hear from uh, Garima. Uh, again, a long uh, multiplication and uh, one of the easiest ways of, uh, you know, one, one would want to approach is do the complete uh, multiplication. But you realize that we're looking at the tens digit and the units digit and the, uh, and, and, and the sum is uh, is what we need. So, okay, I am waiting for the poll to happen. Some people are very fast. Ten seconds done. Thirty seconds. Come on, some more people can do this very fast. Some more people, one minute. Okay, we've got quite a few response, but it seems that there's a little tough one. So, I'll close this now. It's more than a minute and a half. And let's look at this. Uh, is there anyone who would uh, like to share their thoughts about how to approach this? This of you have done this, uh, obviously you have done this correctly. I will wait for a minute and I will see if somebody would want to raise the hand to answer the question. No. Okay. So, um, sorry. Uh, let's uh, look at you know questions like this where you know that we, what we are concerned is the tens and the units digit, and therefore what we are looking at is just that bit of the multiplication. So whether it is four digit, whether it is a 10 digit multiplication also I am bothered about the last two digits only so and if it were a question on the units digit then it was even is even simpler because all you needed to do was to multiply the units digit of the um, two numbers in the particular product if you're looking at the tens digit then obviously you were looking at the last two digits and the multiplication of the same so if you <coughs> You know, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if you are aware of a standard method of two-digit multiplication where, let's say, I'll take this number is only 5 and 9 and we're multiplying it with 7 and 3. Then obviously you know that the last two digits directly multiplied here is 27. We've got 2 in hand. 
and then we cross multiply this. So when we cross multiply, we've got 7 into 9, 63, and 5 into 3, 15. So we've got 78, and then we had a carryover of 2, so it becomes 80. Okay, so we've got the units and the tens digit, and therefore we know what their sum is very easily. We want to continue and finish this two digit multiplication, then you take this 8 and then you multiply the last, the right and most digits, 5 into 7, 38, uh, sorry, 35 and 8 is 43. So the product of this two digit number will be like somewhat like this. But what was important in this question was not only this, but also the fact that you need to consider these two digits only because we are talking about just the tens and the units digit sum of this particular product and uh, we don't need to be bothered about anything else. Let's look at this um, also again you know and uh, let's activate the poll here and uh, then you can respond on the poll. This one's very easily doable, so I would uh, respect if some of you can quickly respond to the poll. Somebody did it in 10 seconds and uh, challenge, not quite correct. Looking for more responses, 30 seconds. Ah, getting more answers on this. Yes, very good. 40 seconds of over. Some more people? Very quickly. Going over to the mark of a minute. Okay, so let's close this. I think most people have uh, already, uh, you know, participated in the poll. Thanks for participating in the poll. You know, the couple of people who, uh, uh, a few people who kind of, you know, jumped into the response early on. In fact, only one of the wrong answers came a little later. But most of the wrong answers came in very early. And those of you who have marked incorrectly know whom I'm talking about. And the challenge is uh, that here you sacrificed, you had sacrificed your accuracy for speed. Though it may not have been necessary because it was just about 10 or 15 seconds or less than 20 seconds actually when you had responded to this you could have taken your 30 seconds also and I'm sure you would have done it right because it's not a question where you would have got it incorrect fundamentally it's only the challenge of speed which may have had happened Okay, so let's move on. Yes, it has to be, the response has to be uh, uh, one followed by six digits because you've got the first uh, digit of the quotient coming in at 567 and after that there are six digits. So the quotient will definitely be a seven digit answer. Now if we look at such question again, you know that it is going to be 19,000 plus but because there are 1900 which includes another thousand that automatically means it's past 20,000 and once it is past 20,000 you know that there is only more 919 so 
it's not the last one is out of the question the last answer option is out of the question because it's 19,000 the sec, uh, C option is also out because it's 19,000 plus 1900 so it's got to be more than 20,000 so the choice is really between A and B and you know 19 ones will obviously have last digit as 9 for sure and therefore you could straight away go to option B which is your correct answer here and as you can see you know even for a simple question like this I'm not trying to add them I'm trying to go by the answer choices because as far as multiple choice questions are concerned your answer choice your question is actually not just the question stem part of it but the answer choices are also part of the question and you must be able to use those answer choices to your benefit and you can get tremendous uh, benefit if you are able to use this very effectively. One of the last polls, we are coming uh, more towards the end of the session now. Uh, we'll have some time for question and answer, of course. And this poll is now activated. And waiting for responses. People have become a little more conscious. Okay, great. <laughs> Waiting for some more responses. Close to a minute now. Great. Most people have been part of the poll. And uh, let me share the response. So we've had uh, a few responses again here which have been incorrect. Again most of them came in around 20 second mark, a little less or more. Uh, fractions is, is considered to be a, 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 a topic which poses certain challenges. But it's still not very challenging if you just focus on the question, how many 1 by 8 are there in 1 by 2? Which means that as many times we write 1 by 8, which means that we have to multiply 1 by 8 in such a way that we get 1 by 2. And therefore we must have a 4 on top. And therefore you get to half. 4 times 1 by 8 will give you to half. If you were to add it and check it, it might have taken a little more time, but if you do the multiplication, you know that you can do it much faster and most of you have done it correctly, I'm sure would have done it using that kind of a perspective of uh, attempting this particular question. Great, last few questions. This is a geometry kind of a figure, I mean geometry kind of a question. This is a figure which has got five squares of the same size, the area of the total figure is 180 square centimeters and the perimeter um, of the figure will be whatever. So each of, each of them are squares, therefore each of them must be, and then they are of the same size, therefore their, their area would be equal.
and 180 divided by is going to give you 36. So each of the figure has an area. You know that the area of the square is square of the side, so it's each side is uh, is, is six. Now, if you look at the perimeter of this figure, you basically leaving at one reload this particular page because I think um, you guys are not able to see my mark. Uh, using my network connection so hopefully yeah so it's working right so now let's so we we were there where we were talking about um, the each side of the square being six that we figured out from uh, the area of each square being 36 square centimeter and then when we talk about the perimeter of the figure we are leaving aside these four sides and all we are adding is three sides from this part two from here two from here two from here and three from here. So we are adding how many how many sides? Six and six. Twelve sides. Each one of them is six centimeter. Therefore, your perimeter is seventy-two. Or else you could very simply write six at each one of them. Count them that would also not take a whole lot of time, yes, it might take you about a minute, but it's you recurrent. So if you are if you are comfortable with geometry questions, can't leave this anyway. So I hope you're getting an idea on in terms of the whole strategic side of approaching this kind of a paper.
if you're looking at this solid shape, is made up of cubical blocks, each of side one centimeter. Now, if we look at uh, each of our sides, okay, this side we have one, two, three, four, and five. Five cubes, and we've got one, two, three vertically down. So you've got 15 blocks on the face of this. And then we have another one, two, three, four in terms of the depth. So we've got three, we've got four, we've got five. And therefore the number of blocks must be a multiple of all of these numbers, five, four, and three. And if you look at that, the only number on your block is 60, which you can also make out because each slice, if you were to do it vertically, each slice, you're getting 15 blocks in each slice and you've got four slices. So you've got 60 blocks altogether. So I think that's something which again is very easily followed if you figure out the multiples of the three dimensions that this shape, solid shape is made up of. So when you talk about solid shapes, the three dimensions have to be very clear and understood in terms of what is available to me and what I need to figure out. Further, if I need to know about the dimension about this shape better. So that brings us uh, to the end of the session and uh, these are our coordinates. You can reach us at ctet.net.in. You can write to us at info at kalakindradindia.com you can connect us on Facebook at ctet.net.in. Okay, I have a question from uh, Sakshi. Uh, second last question. Okay, uh, the geometry question. Great. I'll I'll go back to it. Sakshi, just give me a, a minute. Let's come back to this question and uh, for your benefit, let me restart. The figure area is, just a second, I just got a little, uh, this is square centimeter, okay, and we've got the area of the figure which is 180 square centimeter and we've got five squares. Each one of them have the same size. So we've got each area, each uh, square area as 180 upon sorry, 5, which gives us 36 now this is the area of each of these squares, 5 squares, therefore each side must be 6 centimeter so if each of these sides are 6 centimeter and they are already said to be all equal, so how many 6's do we have here? Which is the perimeter of this particular shape. Perimeter means the outside boundary, length of the boundary of the shape. So we've got 12 such 6. 
3 in this box, sorry in this square, 2 in this square, 2 in this square, 2 in this particular square and again 3 in this corner square. So that makes it 12. So the perimeter of the perimeter of this particular figure will be 12 into 6 that is 72. Hope this is clear from you Sakshi if you could send in a chat text it will be useful and um, is there any other questions we could go to that. Um, or else uh, we could just uh, kind of draw cartons for this. Uh, great, Sakshi, thanks. This is all clear. And uh, one last thing I wanted to share. How to score, if you if you think that you are weak in math, your target should be set to about 40 to 50 percent. You could get three to four questions out of the content questions. And as I said, you know, if you look at the pedagogy questions uh, of the previous year's papers to start with, you will see that you will be able to do anywhere between nine to ten questions, so which means that you are at about 12 to 14 questions out of 30, which is close to 50 percent. If you are someone who is comfortable in math, I would say that the target should be 70 to 80 percent and it's still not, don't get bugged too much about scoring 100 percent because there will be a couple of content questions for sure which might need a little more time in terms of calculation. It may not just strike you that there is a shorter or a faster method of calculating because you're not used to probably in that method. So even if you do 10 to 12 questions is good enough and you will again be able to do 10 to 12 questions in terms of pedagogy questions. Uh, not all of them again, not necessary. 70 to 80 percent in math, fantastic. Go ahead, I mean you, you, you're home, 80 percent in any of these sections and in, even if you drop to 50 percent in one of your weaker sections, overall you still are above um, above the uh, 60 percent mark. And please, uh, you know, try some of these CTED last year papers online on the site at beyondteaching.com and in case you have questions around that, queries around that, we'll be very happy to kind of take questions and we'll soon in our site at ctet.net.in uh, uh, we will also be putting up a, 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 a few new questions every day as well which is available in our Facebook page as well. So you can go to our Facebook page um, of course like it and you could get some real inputs every day, okay. You could come back to the, to the page every day actually. Um, in case you have trouble accessing any of these sites at Beyond Teaching or at uh, 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 .in, um you feel free to uh, reach us email us at info at kalakendraindia.com or you can do that on the Beyond Teaching site also if you have queries you can post that as well. Any further questions I'll be happy to take it otherwise we'll probably wait for two three minutes and then close the session for the day today. We'll be happy to meet you next Friday. I'm really extremely sorry that we, we had to kind of reschedule the uh, session yesterday due to some technical emergencies, but uh, I, I I hope uh, you can 
always uh, I, 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 I'm very delighted that all of you found time to kind of join us today and be part of this session.